I upgraded my game with 75,000 plus lines of code to a brand new engine. So for context, I'm Kenneth. I'm working on an indie game called Isidore's Edge. It's a 2D action platformer with cool movement mechanics and a focus on combat. I'm sure you're watching some cool B-roll. Uh, yeah, it's actually available on Steam right now for wishlisting. More to come on that later, but in case you want to wishlist it, you can check it out. It'll be top of the description, uh, maybe a pinned comment or something. <laughs> Jumping in real quick to say that I also just put up the Kickstarter pre-launch page. So if you would potentially be interested in backing the game when the Kickstarter finally launches, you should hop on over there and and give the Kickstarter a follow. I'll put it in the description and, and the pinned comment and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it more in detail in a later video, but I was just putting the finishing touches on this edit uh, when I posted the Kickstarter. So I uh, wanted to jump in here and let you know about it. All right, back to the video. So I mentioned upgrading my 75,000 lines of code. First, uh, I gotta say that 75,000 lines of code is extremely misleading. I think I have like 48,000 lines of JSON and all of that JSON is just automatically generated by A-Sprite when I export my sprite sheets. So I don't know if that really counts, but when I run a line counting tool <laughs> that shows me how many lines of code my game has, it says 75,000. But if you ignore that, then I have about like 26,000 lines of actual GD script. <laughs> I think the code counting tool also counts empty spaces as lines, and I think I got like 6,000 of those. So really, I'm converting like a 20,000 lines game of code. But <laughs> I was on Godot 3.2. The new version of Godot, I think it's at like 4.2. And I've really been holding back on wanting to convert the game for like a number of reasons. One is it's like a long process. And the longer you wait to do it, the more stuff you have to convert. They keep pushing out more features and new stuff and changing how stuff works and all for good reasons, I'm sure. But it just means that I have like a lot of stuff I would have to do if I wanted to use the new version of Godot. And there wasn't anything that I desperately needed to upgrade for. You know, it's like I can make the game I want to make in the version of Godot I'm using. So why would I add all that extra effort and all that extra time on what I'm working on when I really don't need to? Yeah, there are some features I'd like to use. There's like a bunch of cool stuff with like tile sets that I was looking forward to, but none of it was enough to convince me to move forward until I ran into this particular little problem where whenever I tried to load a room, so I was setting up one of the levels and I made this like area loading concept. Whenever you hit a certain activation volume, it will spawn in the next area and then it loads those new areas whenever you load a room. So for, for example, you walk into room one and it's connected to room two. So it starts loading room two as you enter room one. Then once you hit a certain volume, it places room two in the level. When you move into room two, it starts loading room three. And when you hit a certain volume, it spawns room three. Then when you enter room three, it despawns room one and starts loading room four. That way you always have this like seamless gameplay. It's what a lot of Metroidvanias do, that, that sort of like whatever room is connected to is loaded and then it gets placed when you hit a certain point. And I was having a massive lag spike whenever I tried to actually instantiate the room, which didn't make too much sense to me because like, I mean, I couldn't really find a reason for it. I did a bunch of profiling and I figured out there were like some physics processing stuff that was happening when I placed the new room, when I actually instantiated the, uh, the node. I optimized the hell out of all that physics stuff. And I don't need to go into all the specifics. I mean, if you've seen any of my game dev secret shorts, you know some of the stuff I was doing to optimize physics. So I, and I got it so that the physics processing I'm just making sure my mic is recording. I got it so that the physics process I, I was doing was like way down. It basically was like the same as any other frame, but it still had this huge spike in idle time. And idle time is just a term that basically means when the CPU is just like waiting around, it can't keep running the game because there's something it's waiting on. And I didn't know what it was waiting on. So I started digging around and it seems like the thing it's waiting on is for the shaders to compile. I don't have very many shaders in my game. For the most part, I just use shaders right now to flash the enemy white when they get hit. I mean, look at that. Ooh, baby. There are a few other places I use shaders. I like, it, it, there's a shader that I use to shrink the pixels on a fireball's tail from like when it starts and when it ends. That way it stays pixel perfect, but also like stretches without needing to use just like generic X scaling, which I'm pretty proud of that shader, but it, I mean, compiling those shouldn't be such a huge hit. I was looking for like, is there a solution to this shader compilation? And as far as I could find, not really except for using the Vulkan Renderer, which is a renderer available in Godot 4. And even then, it might not just fix the problem by itself. It might give me the option to cache all of the compiled shaders. The shader compilation isn't that slow, especially right now. Maybe it will be a little bit slower by the time I have like a full game built. But if I can just like load everything in behind the scenes on that initial startup of the game, and then it'll solve the problem. And it doesn't seem like I can do the same thing in Godot 3.2. All of that to say that I need to upgrade to Godot 4. And this has taken quite a bit of time behind the scenes. And I actually initially wasn't even gonna make 
a video talking about it because it was kind of hard to figure out like what do I even say? <laughs> I've been trying to be really focused in these devlogs recently, give you something that I like actually need to talk about and maybe like write a script so that it's it's a uh, very thorough. But then I found a video by uh, DevDuck, who is an incredible channel. He's making a game called Dauphin. Editor Senpai, you can throw up some stuff on the screen showing off what that guy's doing. Yeah, his game looks really cool, excited for it. And he had a video about upgrading his project to Godot 4. And I thought that video was really interesting. So I figured I would just, you know, tell you guys about what's going on behind the scenes so you can know what I'm up to as well. And so I created my backup of the project, which by the way, I want to figure out how to make a game dev secret about it, about version control, because it's so important. It's like for any game dev that's not using version control, the best tip I could possibly give you to help you is to use version control. I created a new branch on my project to do the Godot 4 upgrade and I ran the conversion, which when you install Godot 4 and then you try to open the previous project in it, it's like, hey, we are going to destructively convert your game. <laughs> and so make sure it's like backed up, make sure it's good to go because we're just changing all the files in place. So I ran the conversion and then I opened the project and I actually wanted to see, I wanted to have like a real time recording of what happened with that conversion process. So here is me opening the project for the very first time after it's converted and you can see I've got, I don't know, I've got almost 200 errors. I've got like a whole bunch of warnings. I'm scrolling up through this. It looks like a mess. I started like navigating through like the different scenes and stuff in my project to see what was going on. And you can see like the, the pixel art looks really weird and funky, which immediately strikes me as it's like not importing correctly because in the in Godot 3.2, you have to import all of your sprites as like 2D pixel type. <laughs> so I thought maybe those aren't being imported properly. I went to some of the different scenes where I set up like environments to test and see what they look like. And those scenes, like the tile sets have been destroyed. It's like obviously a mess. I went and looked at some of the enemies. They also have the messed up pixel art and they're like colliders are messed up. So there's a lot of problems to solve. And then if I go to like my main menu scene, there's just like a big, <laughs> a big blue box where there's supposed to be all the stuff that I use. It's like my test level stuff where I can load in different levels of the game to see what's going on there. Basically everything is kind of borked. And I was really afraid of my like snail lasagna camera, which by the way, if you haven't seen that yet, go check out the video about it. Is it, is it here? I think it's here. It's not here, right? It's here, yeah. Bleep. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little blooper in here. Not a blooper. I'm gonna put a little squabble doodle or whatever up here so you can click on it and go watch the camera video if you haven't yet. But I have a very complicated camera system for rendering out the pixel art in the game. And I was very afraid that that wouldn't work in Godot 4. And it didn't. The first thing I needed to do was go figure out what was going on with like my level select. Why is it just a big blue square? Because I obviously can't test the game when it looks like this. So I just had to fix that shader. Boom, all right, one problem down. So now I can load the game and there's like lots of problems that I need to fix. I actually can't load the game yet. I lied. So first, there's like a bunch of compilation errors. Like the game won't start. So I got rid of the blue rectangle. And now when I try to start the game, it <laughs> dies. <laughs> and you would think there would be like a lot of different types of compilation errors based on like, oh, this is a, there's some beeping in the background. I really hope it's not getting picked up. I think it's like a garbage truck. I mean, you saw there's almost like 200 errors just in the freaking console. So I went through those errors trying to figure out, okay, what's, what's all the problems? And they really came down to essentially three major categories. So the first of the categories, I can hear a garbage truck outside my window, uh, but my mic is saying it's not picking it up. So if you can hear it, my apologies. Bro, I was doing so good and this garbage truck is like fucking my life. So I need to make sure I record this before the week backing starts. So there were three major categories of issues. The first were export variables. In Godot 3.2, you say export var variable name, and then you pass it. And that's how you can like change things on scenes. Uh, you can dynamically alter data. And I use export variables everywhere because I love being able to go into the scene and just like change some stuff and then see how it affects it. Right. Uh, and they, ch they just change the syntax for it. They, okay. My camera died, which is crazy because I checked the battery before I started recording and it said it was fine, but power through it. Everything in the universe is telling me not to record this. I didn't have time to do it anyway. And I'm still going all of my like generic controllers, the generic enemy physics, the generic projectile physics. Those are all configurable using this big list of export variables for each individual enemy or projectile in the game. So I <laughs> love export variables. And in the new version of Godot, they changed the syntax, which they still work the same way, <laughs> but you have to tell them how to work differently. Essentially, you just have to put them into the code differently. So I had to go through <laughs> and manually change all of my export variables. And I recorded a little bit of this process. So you can probably see some B-roll on the screen right now of me going through and changing these export variables. And it was very mind numbing. I even thought about writing like a little Python script or something that goes through all my GD script files and like redoes the syntax for the export variables. But I figured that that would probably take longer than me just doing it manually. And for these kind of things, just quickly doing it manually is probably the best solution. So two, 
tweens. Tweens are this really cool like object node type that you can use to interpolate a value. So if you want a, an object to move from here to here, you could just like every frame update the position along that path. Or you could use a tween that says, hey, start at this value, get to this value. Uh, and it can do all that nice like fluid interpolation stuff for you. So tweens are incredibly useful. I also use tweens. In Godot 3.2, tweens are a node. You place the node in the scene and then you get a reference to that tween node. And then you call all your tweens on that node. So. And so I'll get that tween node and I'll say, hey, Mr. Tween node, I would like you to interpolate this variable from uh, value zero to value one. And I would like it to take a two seconds and I want you to ease in, right? You tell it all the stuff you want. And then you say, all right, Mr. Tween, you got all my stuff. Uh, Mr. Tween, it's like Mr. Clean, but, <laughs> but with motion blur. All right, Mr. Tween. And you can like load up as many of those interpolation calls as you want and you're good to go. They changed it in Godot 4 to instead of putting a node in the scene and then getting a reference to it, instead of doing all that, you literally say create tween and it like instances a node on like the root tree for you. I don't know the reason behind this, but whatever. <laughs> like, I, I don't know the reason behind making tweens work like this. And maybe it's just like easier for someone who isn't already used to the way tweens used to work. But I've made a lot of tweens. I've had two years of tweens using the old system. So now I have to get used to the new system. Also, I do think the call pattern feels a lot nicer though, uh, because instead of calling interpolate property and then passing all that stuff and then telling it to start, you just say like tween value. I forget if it might be called property tween, tween property, something like that. Whatever the new syntax is, you just call it and then you pass this stuff. You don't have to pass it the starting variable anymore. And then you can like daisy chain all the different things you want it to do. Like you can add on like, hey, tween this value to one. And then you can say dot set the easing to this dot set the transition type to this. Right. And then it'll just run it instantly. You don't have to tell it to start. And so you can just like put your tweens in order and then they'll run in order rather than needing to set them up with delays and then have them all run according to the delay. So there's lots of nice things about the change too. It's not like it's not like a bad change. In fact, I think it's probably a good change. I'm just used to the old system. <laughs> And I need to go through and delete every tween node from every scene that has a tween node in it. And you can actually see in the editor, here's one of my scene files that has a tween in it. So here's the player's uh, scene. And you can see there's like a little red X next to the node that I've named with like tween uh, because it's like, hey, this node don't exist. I don't know what it's doing here and I don't like it and I would like it to get out. So I had to go through, delete all those tweens and then rewrite the tween. And this was much more difficult than the export variables because the export variable is just changing the syntax. Like literally it's just like, instead of saying export, you say at export. And instead of having the variable type in parentheses, you move it to the end. For tweens, I actually needed to like think a little bit <laughs> and rewrite how the tween works. For example, um, for one that has like a bunch of delays so that they all run in order, instead of having all those delays in there, I just need to call them all individually. So I actually had to like think about what's going on with the tweens. But again, it's not too bad. Again, it was mostly just me going through and figuring it out. And then number three, three is a category of stuff that's just not valid anymore. When you instance a node in Godot 3.2, you call dot instance. Now you need to call dot instantiate. And actually the importer like into the new project version fixed this most places. There was only like four or five places where I called dot instance that I had to manually replace. Don't know why it missed those couple instances. So fixing those and then like using like file, like direct file references. And then my area loader used some stuff that no longer exists. Those were like mostly one off. You know, it's like there were a bunch of uh, export variables I needed to fix and a bunch of tweens I needed to fix and a couple of other stuff. Then the project can start. Oh no, the weed whackers. I almost got it in there. Bro, everything is telling me not to record. Maybe they'll take a break. It's almost noon. They don't need lunch. In the middle of talking about my cool new notes, and someone's doing some weed whacking outside my window. I don't know why this is the perfect time to do a weed whacking. All right, there was a weed whacker, <laughs> so I had to pause the recording for a minute. So we're getting back into it now. Now that I've fixed all the compilation errors, I can actually load into the game. And it works in some ways. They all, they changed how animated sprites work. I use animated sprites for a lot of projectiles and like burst and impact VFX and stuff. Uh, and those don't work anymore because <laughs> they changed how you have to call them. Instead of turning playing to false, you actually say like dot play and dot stop, which is much better. Uh, the fact that I was like flipping booleans to, to start and end those animated sprites was never a good thing. A lot of the animated sprites aren't really working correctly, but that's fine. I can go fix that. The main issue is there's this weird camera thing that happens. So the camera works at first. So that's like a huge relief that the camera system isn't like uh, fundamentally broken. When you die and respawn, this happens. And it's just, it's a little bit, it's weird, right? It's like the camera is following Isadora, even though she's not moving. Like it's really not obvious what's going on. But when you really dig into it, you can tell that, so my camera is broken up into lots of different layers and like the Isadora viewport, the one that she exists on is separate from like the world's viewport. And that means that the camera following her isn't actually like moving at all. And the camera following the world is still moving, right? It's like, there's basically a disconnect in the cameras. And it took a lot of debugging and a lot of looking through stuff, but I'll just get right to the chase <laughs> where the issue is that in Godot 3.2, whenever a node, whenever a camera enters a viewport, it automatically registers like, hey, make this the active viewport. However, 
However, in Godot 4, it was not doing that. So when the player dies and I move the node out of the level to like the holding tree, um, I move it to the root tree. So when the player dies, I take the player's node and I move it out to the like root, right? It's like existing by itself, ready to be added to the level when it spawns. Then I clear out that level, reload it, and then put the player back in there. And before that works perfectly because the player gets moved out of the main world and then gets brought back in. So now the camera is following the main world again. But in Godot 4, it doesn't actually register that that camera exists. Did I explain that well? Essentially, when the player dies, I move their node out. And then when the world respawns, I move the node back in. And moving the node back in used to instantly re-register the camera that exists in the player against the viewport now it doesn't do that so it causes this weird behavior this is extremely easy to fix i just need to make it so that when you enter the world it registers the camera and that and it works look boom <laughs> the problem was figuring it out it took me hours of debugging to figure out what was going on because it's like i mean just from looking at what's happening it's not even clear what the bug is and then you got to figure out what the bug is like oh this camera's not responding well why isn't the camera responding so hopefully if you're doing godot upgrade I just saved you hours of effort. <laughs> Once I fix that, suddenly almost everything is working. We got the camera following the player. The levels are loading appropriately. The UI got all messed up. It all got like shifted up into the left, but the UI is all placeholder anyway. So that's not a big deal. I'll just fix that when it comes. And then the other really big thing that got broken is all of my hitboxes, like all of the collision shapes got like reset, <laughs> which sucks because, you know, I had drawn a lot of these, a lot of these like individual frames. I was doing every single one of those hitbox systems bespoke for each attack because I didn't really have a good idea for how to do a generic like frame data hitbox system, but I've been thinking about it since I need to remake all my hitboxes and I actually have a bit of an idea of how I should do that. So probably the next video is going to be me breaking down the frame data. Probably won't be a long one. Uh, so yeah, so got the camera fixed. Time to finally see if it fixes the bug. Can I load a level with no issue? No. <laughs> when you walk into the room and it tries to instantiate the node, there's a lag spike and it's even bigger than the previous lag spike. Dude, this killed me. Oh man, I my motivation was in the gutter. I, I was completely distraught. I was like, dude, I did all this work converting my game and it doesn't even fix the problem I had. But I went and looked and the lag spike was happening due to physics processing, not idle time. That does mean that maybe it's not due to the same issue as before. There's a physics issue. And so I combed through everything I could think of to fix the to, to fix this physics issue. Is it like the object pooling? Is it the way the projectiles? And I like was turning stuff off. This, this is actually a great debugging tip. Turn off stuff and see if the problem still exists. So I went through all the different rooms I was trying to load and I delete enemies. Does it still happen? Delete this. Does it still happen? And I was deleting literally everything and it was still having this huge physics slowdown. The only thing I didn't delete was the tile set. And so I was like, okay, maybe that's that's the problem. The tile set shouldn't be an issue, but let me go check. So I went in and um, and looked through the tile set and I noticed that it replaced every individual tile in the previous tile sets with an entire tile map. Every time it tried to load an individual tile in the level. Oh God! <laughs> You can scroll through and see my little blue builder tiles. Every single tile is its own tile map. And the collision was enabled for all of these tiles. So even though the original tile maps got destroyed and I had to rebuild the tiles, I didn't notice that every tile I placed was causing a calculation for like, you know, 20 different tile maps. Obviously, this was easy to fix. I just deleted all that extra tile map info and reset up the, the tile set correctly. But finding it took a, a long time and it was super stressful. But figured it out. And now you can see I can load and instantiate a new room in the level instantly. No, no lag at all. It just pops in and you can continue playing. It's the same as any other frame. And boy, it was a long road to get there. I would continue talking more, but the weed whacking has restarted outside my window and I think you can probably hear it. <laughs> But yeah, the Godot 4 upgrade was a huge success. I still need to go fix those animated sprites. There's a few bugs here and there. I didn't even mention the shaders um, because the shaders also change syntax, but that was like relatively easy. That's more just like syntax stuff. Um, and Godot provides you a pretty good guide on how to do all that. So mainly the big issues was the tile sets and the camera, but we're in Godot 4 now. We got access to the new tile map features that I'm excited to use. Got access to the animation library stuff. We fixed the loading bug, so we're in a great place. Yeah, so smash that like button, uh, smash the subscribe button, smash the wishlist button on Isadora, on on Steam, uh, smash your keyboard over and over again in a rhythmic pattern to, to create sentences that form the comment that you want to leave and then smash that leave comment button. And then, <laughs> and then I don't know, smash a glass on the ground. I, I don't know how to continue this metaphor. All right, peace out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.